Hi, you're watching Just the News. I'm Amita Balachandra. We start off with COVID restrictions across the country, starting off with Delhi, which has seen the maximum number of a single day rise in COVID cases across the country. Uh, private offices are currently shut and uh, the Delhi government has asked people to work from home except the ones in exempted category. Till now, private offices were asked to call only 50% of their staff to the office. And uh, these are the uh, banks and offices in the exempted ca uh, category, private banks, offices providing essential services. RBI regulated entities, NBFCs, microfinance uh, institutions, offices of advocates and courier services. These fall in the exempted category and are allowed to function. The DDMA or the Delhi Disaster Management Authority is also ordered restaurants to shut dine-in services, uh, allowing only takeaway and home delivery uh, services. Markets and malls, meanwhile, will function on an odd even basis as is being followed for the last one week. And the reason so many restrictions has come in in Delhi is because it's reported 21,259 new COVID cases, and this is the highest across the country. It's a 10% increase from yesterday in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate has also gone up uh, at 25.65%, which is the highest since the 5th of May. The city has also reported 23 deaths so far, uh, which is also the highest in the last eight months. The number of containment zones have also jumped to 17,629. Nearly 83,000 tests were conducted in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, the Delhi Chief Minister, uh, in an interview with ANI, has said, and I quote, Don't worry, we will not impose a lockdown, end quote. Meanwhile, India has reported over 1.68 lakh new COVID cases and 277 deaths in the last 24 hours. The daily positivity uh, rate stands at 10.64%. Active cases are now over 8 lakhs. Mumbai has reported uh, 11,647 uh, new COVID cases and this is a good improvement from yesterday's cases which was over 13,000 cases. In the last couple of uh, days, we've seen uh, Mumbai's fresh COVID cases above 20,000. That has come down to 11,647, which is which is a good thing. Kolkata has reported, and this is yesterday's number. The new number has not come in yet. 5,556 new COVID cases as of yesterday. According to the Union uh, Ministry of Health, the Omicron tally has reached 4,461, with Maharashtra reporting the highest uh, at 1,247, followed by Rajasthan and Delhi. In the meantime, 9.68 lakh people from three priority groups, the elderly with comorbidities, healthcare workers, and frontline workers were administered the third dose across the country uh, on the first day of the rollout. We must point out Kerala's numbers here as well. Kerala has seen a massive jump in COVID cases. It's reported 9,066 cases and 19 deaths. Uh, the state has recorded 9,066 uh, 9 new COVID cases, 2,064 recoveries and 19 deaths in the last 24 hours. Moving on now, the Haridwar District Administration has put a complete ban on devotees taking holy dip in Ganga on Makar Sankranti that will be celebrated on the 14th of January. Now, entry at Harkibori area has also been restricted, while a night curfew will be imposed from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. on the 14th of January. Meanwhile, Dr. N.K. Arora, who is the chairman of COVID-19 Working Group of NTAGI, on Tuesday has said that Molnupiravir, which prevents hospitalization and ICU admissions, can be given to senior citizens, uh, particularly those with comorbidities. However, according to an ENI report, he has said that it should not be given to people of the reproductive age. Last month, if you remember, the Indian drug uh, regulator, Central Drug Standard Control Organization, had approved the antiviral drug for restricted emergency use against coronavirus. And COVID news now from across the globe. Regional Director for U uh, WHO's European Office has said that 
more than half of the region's population will be infected with the variant of COVID, which is Omicron, in the next two months if infections continue at the current rate. Mr. Hans Klug said in a press conference, and I quote, At this rate, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation forecasts that more than 50% of the population in the region will be infected with Omicron in the next six to eight weeks, end quote. Now, the WHO's European region uh, comprises 53 countries and territories, including several in Central Asia. Mr. Klug noted that 50 of them now have confirmed cases of Omicron. Meanwhile, the number of hospitalized people with COVID in France has risen by 767 to 22,749 as of Monday, which is the biggest increase since April 2021. This comes amid rising coronavirus cases in France due to this variant as well. According to the health minister, the Omicron coronavirus uh, variant leads to less serious complications than previous variants, but since it's highly infectious, it is pushing hospital numbers up quickly. France has also reported 94,000 COVID cases as of Monday. On to some political news now away from COVID. NCP chief Sharad Pawar has said that the party is in talks with the Congress and the Trinamool Congress for an alliance ahead of the Goa Assembly elections. Now at a press conference, he said, and I quote, for Goa, discussions are underway between the Congress the TMC and the NCP. At some uh, seats where we wanted to contest, we have given that list to other two parties. I am sure that the final decision will be taken in the next two days." End quote. He added that NCP will contest Uttar Pradesh elections with Samajwadi Party and other smaller parties. Meanwhile, in Goa, two Goa BJP MLAs have quit the party ahead of the elections. Now, MLA Praveen Zante has quit the ruling party uh, hours after Goa Minister Michelle Lobo quit the BJP, saying it is, and I quote, no longer a party for the common man, end quote. In Uttar Pradesh, according to NDTV, in a massive blow to the BJP and uh, Yogi Adityanath, just before the Uttar Pradesh elections, a minister and four MLAs have quit today and joined the party's main challenger, Circulesh Yadav's party. Now, Swami Prasad Maurya, a top minister in the Yogi Adityanath government, posted his resignation letter on Twitter. And this is what it reads, and I quote, Despite a divergent ideology, I worked with dedication in the Yogi Adityanath cabinet, but because of the grave oppression of Dalits, OBCs, farmers, unemployed and small businessmen, I am resigning." End quote. Now, the BSP party general secretary S.C. Mishra has said that uh, the president Mayavati will not contest the upcoming Uttar Pradesh assembly polls. Uh, he said this in Lucknow today. Mr. Mishra also said that he will also not contest the state elections, which will be held in seven phases starting the 10th of February. In other news now, according to an Indian Express report, doctors and government hospitals across Haryana went on mass leave today. Haryana Civil Medical As uh, Services Association has said that they have threatened to go on an indefinite strike from the 14th of January if their demands are not met. And these are the demands the doctors have been demanding the creation of a specialist cadre, stopping direct recruitment or uh, of uh, senior medical officers and amending the postgraduate policy. Let's now take a look at what's making news in the world of business. The Central Board of Direct Taxes on Tuesday has extended the due date for filing income tax returns for assessment year 2021-22 till the 15th of March 2022. So a lot of people who have missed that deadline can now file their taxes. The tax department also extended the due date for other uh, compliances on consideration of difficulties reported by the taxpayers and other stakeholders due to COVID and in electronic filing of various reports of audit under the provisions of the Income Tax Act 1961. And news coming in from across the world, there are updates in the Kazakhstan story. Kazakhstan's president has said that the Russian-led military bloc will begin withdrawing its troops in two days after fulfilling its main mission of stabilizing the Central Asian country after violent anti-government protests. In a speech, the president said, and I quote, the withdrawal process of the contingent will take no more than 10 days, 
end quote. The troops were deployed last week at the president's request. Interestingly, uh, Russian president had also said that they will not stay for long. He had said that they will stay for a limited period. Uh, Kazakh authorities say order has been largely restored in the nation of 19 million and that almost 10,000 people have been detained over the unrest. Meanwhile, the United Nations as of today has said that it needs $5 billion in aid for Afghanistan in 2022 to avoid and avert a humanitarian catastrophe and offer the ravaged country a future after 40 years of suffering. In its biggest ever single country appeal, the UN has said that $4.4 billion was needed within Afghanistan, while a further $623 million was required to support the millions of Afghans sheltering beyond its borders. The US, uh, if you remember, had a frozen billions of dollars of the country's assets while aid supplies have been heavily disrupted as well. Afghanistan also suffered its worst drought in decades in 2021. Meanwhile, in Canada, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has said that the government has secured enough COVID vaccine doses for all eligible Canadians to receive a booster as well as a fourth dose. Now, this comes up as the country grapples with rising infections and hospitalization rates due to the Omicron variant. Moving on to sports news right now, a two-time Olympic medalist PV Sindhu has advanced to the second round of the women's singles in the ongoing India Open 2022. Now, she defeated compatriot Sri Krishna Priya in 27 minutes in the first round. In men's singles, Kirambi Srikanth defeated compatriot Cyril Parma. And one piece of good news before we wrap up this bulletin, this is truly good news. Poet and activist Maya Angelou has become the first black woman to appear on the US quarter in a new version of the coin unveiled by the US Mint on Monday. According to a press release by the agency, the US Mint has begun shipping the first coins with Angelou's likeness. Uh, on the American Quarter, a 25 cent piece. Now, Angelo, who rose to prominence uh, with her first autobiographical work, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, in 1969, will also be the first figure commemorated through the American Women Quarters program, which was signed into law in January 2021. Well, that brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. If you want us to pick up any news stories that you think we may have missed, please mention in the comment below. Good night.